In this week's Parsha of Alotcha, we have the Birchat Kohanim. It's interesting that the Torah did not leave the Birchat Kohanim up to the Kohanim. One would say uh, it, the mitzvah is to bless the Jewish people. So let every Kohen bless the Jewish people as he sees fit, depending on the time, depending on the circumstance, depending upon the location, depending on all the variants that we have in life. But the Torah says, Ko so Marlohem, this is what you should say. 15 words. And it's for all time and for all circumstances. Now the Ashkenazi custom is that in the diaspora outside of Eretz Israel, uh, the Kohanim do not recite the blessings except on the holidays, the Musaf of the holidays. In Svardim, there are communities that recite it every day, like being in Eretz Israel. There are those that recite it on Shaba, and there are those that follow the Ashkenazi custom as well. Why don't we say Birchat Kohanim in the exile? One would say that if there ever was a place where we needed Birchat Kohanim, it's Los Angeles. It's outside of Eretz Israel. Yet we don't say Birchat Kohanim. So there are many reasons advanced. But the main reason is because outside Eretz Israel, uh, there is no uh, true simcha. There's no true happiness and joy because there's always an underlying feeling that we're strangers, that we're not home. And the mitzvah of the Kohanim, they say it in their uh, bracha, is to bless the Jewish people with love. It's not enough to say the words. You have to do it with love. And our rabbis teach us that love is an emotional state that one achieves only when one, so to speak, has a sense of simcha within, the, within himself or herself. The mere fact that I love you or that I have someone to love or that I receive love automatically puts me into a state of Simcha. In the exile, that Simcha is not possible. So therefore, it will always be lacking Biahapa. If it's lacking Biahapa, then uh, it's better not to do it. It's a strange concept because we have a uh, discussion in the Gemara, whether or not mitzvah, sriches, kavona or not. 
Does intent count when you do a mitzvah? And the Gemara at the conclusion says, mitzvah say non suchas kavon. They don't need the kavon. The biyot say the mitzvah. Certainly we want you to have kavon or intent. We want you to, to know what you're doing. We don't want you to do things at random. But the bare requirement of the mitzvah is just that you do it. So if you walk by the dining room table on the first day of Sukkot and your esrig and lulav are lying on the table and you absentmindedly want to move it. So you pick it up. You did the mitzvah already. Even that was not your intent. And you didn't say Yerotzon, and you didn't say L'Shem Yichud, you didn't do anything. You took all the drama out of the mitzvah. But mitzvah say them tzichim's kavonah. Mitzvah don't, don't need kavonah. So what's wrong with the Kohanim? So many say that that's the origin of the Sephardic custom. That they do him, that they uh, say Birchas Kohanim, even in Morocco or Spain or Iraq or Iran, Yemen, even though they are not the Simcha, and even though the Ahava is deficient, but Mitzvah Zayn Zuchus Kavone, you right? They say, you know, Yivarechet, oh, good, fine. Good enough. So what about the Ashkenazi? So the, this is a discussion in Halach. So the Achronim say that by Birchas Kohanim, Ahava is not a side issue. It is part of the mitzvah itself. Like, for instance, if I pick up the Esrig without the Lulav, I'm not Yotze. I only did a partial mitzvah. in order to do a full mitzvah. So I have to pick up the lulav as well. Well, in order to do a full mitzvah, I have to do it the avo. And if I don't do it the avo, I didn't do the mitzvah. If I didn't do the mitzvah, then why should we go through the whole thing? Take God's name in vain, so to speak. So those are the two streams of thought regarding Berchaz Kohanim. It's also interesting that uh, Berchaz Kohanim uh, are, uh, is given to every Kohen regardless of the uh, scholarship or piety of the Kohen. Uh, we have a custom that Kohanim that are not Sabbath observers uh, should not do it. However, the Achronim all say that if it would be a source of embarrassment, in other words, everybody knows he's a Kohen. And if he doesn't go up to do him, it would be noticeable. So even though he's not the Kohen that we would wish him to be, he nevertheless can participate in Birchaz Kohen. <clears throat> when I was a row in Miami Beach, so uh, there was a very wealthy woman that lived in our neighborhood who was a member of the synagogue. She was a widow. Her husband left her millions and millions. And because she was such a wealthy woman, 
everybody thought she was eccentric instead of crazy. But she was a, a special lady. And uh, my wife and I had a lot to do with her. We uh, took care of her. In fact, unbelievable. You know, I spoke to a bunch of Rebbitsons at one time. And I told them, you know, that uh, my wife used to go and give this woman a bath. I said, are you prepared to do that? Because if you're not, then you shouldn't be in the business. So in any event, uh, when it came to Birchas Kohanim on Yom Tov in our shul in Miami Beach, this lady would walk out. So the first time it happened, so maybe she had to go outside and, you know, you don't know what to do with people. But after a period of time, after a year or two, it became obvious that that was her pattern. She was making a statement. So I said to her, Mrs. So-and-so, why don't you stay in for Birchat Kohanim? Get the blessings of the Lord. And she said to me, I'm gonna let those schnorrers bless me. <laughs> so uh, one of the ideas that the Forshim say is that's why the Kohanim cover themselves with their talit. So you don't see who the Kohen is that blessed them. Because it may be somebody, you know, that schnorrer is gonna bless me. So what is the blessing? Yivarechecho Hashem v'yishmerecho. Yivarechecho. God should bless you. The truth of the matter in life, uh, it's very hard to uh, define what's a blessing. Many times in life, things happen to us that we feel to be negative. Not a good thing. And it turns out to be the best thing that ever happened to us. It saved our lives. It, it uh, allowed us to meet our spouse. So all sorts of things happen. So who defines what a bracha is? Because I'll say famous uh, idea that Avraham Avinu dies at 175. Yitzchak lives to 180. So the Medrash says that Avraham Avinu was also supposed to live to 180. But that the Lord took him five years early, so to speak, so that he wouldn't have to see Ace of already in his... Thank you. Thank you very much. Ace of in his evil way. I'm trying to find you. That coffee 50 for four. But they don't have any 15, 14 as the highest. <laughs> okay. So his uh, passing away five years earlier than one is supposed to, is that a blessing? Because how hell that it was. In God's terms, it was a blessing. Abraham didn't have to suffer to see his grandchild as a murderer, as a rapist, as an idolater. So, Yivarechecho Hashem, God should bless you. God knows what's a blessing.
There's a famous uh, bad joke. Those are the ones I love. That uh, Satchin came to uh, a young man and he said, I have a girl that I want to propose for you. So he said, oh, well, tell me about her. So he said, well, uh, she has a speech impediment. So the young man said, well, that's not a good thing. So the Shatskan said, no, that's a great thing. It's a mindless. She doesn't talk much, you know. <laughs> what else? He said, you know, she's uh, slightly physically impaired with her hands. They don't move well. So the boy said, well, that's not such a good thing. Now Shatkan said, well, it's a great thing. She, she'll never strike you. She'll never be violent with you. So he said, what else? So he said, well, you know, she's bent over. She, she has a spinal issue. She can't stand straight. So he said, that's not so good. So the Shatran said, a girl that has so many good qualities, you can't afford one bad one. <laughs> so how do we define all of these things? One man's liability is someone else's asset. So only the Rebellion Shalom knows. famous uh, anecdote regarding the Chafetz Chaim is that the Jew came to him and complained. He said, Rebbe, it wouldn't hurt me if I had another uh, 100 ruble a week. And the Chafetz Chaim answered him, how do you know it wouldn't hurt you? There are people who, uh, when they make a $50,000 a year are wonderful people. They make a half a million a year. They're unbearable. So you don't know what a blessing is. So that's your varecha ko Hashem. May God bless you. Because that's a true blessing. Vishmarecha. And he should guard you. Because I'll say, Itzavti uh, Lecho Shomrim. I have established for you guards. Uh, you know, I have now the, uh, all the public officials need security. The United States and Supreme Court justices. You have to have protection. But the Bali Musa said, who protects you from yourself? That's the issue. That's the period that we say on Yom Kippur, Om Nam Yetzer Solchein Bon. Is it not true that evil dwells within us? So I can hire all of the security in the world but not protect me from what is within me. So when we say v'yishmarecha, God should guard us, we are not only talking about external dangers, not just about the society and the environment and all the other things that are going on that are dangerous beyond words, but we're talking about ourselves. Should give me the strength to guard myself. Because I'll say, for instance, that uh, that's why uh, we were created with having lips and uh, teeth before we get to the tongue. And that's to prevent us from misusing speech. So we have erected barriers to the speech. 
our teeth, our lips. And uh, Omar Melech said, uh, David says in Tehillim too, that God, I've established for you guards. That's the mitzvahs. It's all to guard us. And it's to guard us from ourselves, not from others. Then it says, Yisrael Hashem Pono Velecha Vichuneka. So there's something called the face, head on, face to face. So we live in a time like I'm talking into this machine now. I'm not talking face to face to hundreds of people. There's no human interaction. Because I'll say that the Jewish people, when they saw that Moshe's face was illuminated, Kikoran or Bonav Shal Moshe, that was, so to speak, the thing that sealed the deal. Then they understood what Torah was. Torah can make your face light up. So with the Birchas Kohanim, we, so to speak, deal face to face with the Rabbi Shalom. Because we're not dependent on our talents and on our abilities. We say it's up to you, God. And the blessing is Rechuneko. He should give you Chain. Now, Chain is the indefinable term. Chain is a feeling of pleasantness, of accomplishment, of achieving something. I remember uh, there was a certain young man that was courting a girl and the uh, father of the girl was not that impressed with the young man. But the mother-in-law, future mother-in-law, she wanted it and she convinced her husband and they got married and they really lived happily ever after. And they had a wonderful family and everything. So I once asked the mother, uh, what did she see that the father didn't see? And she said to me, in Yiddish, she said, Eret gehat chein. He had chein. You had this gift of being a pleasant, good person. You sensed it immediately. So Chazal say, people like to live in the city that they were in. It has a certain chain to it. Person's spouse has a chain to him. The Rabboni Shalom should give us the gift of chain. The gift of chain allows for tolerance. It allows for, you know, you can love your wife, 
He will love your husband. But every human being has a quirk. He says, you know, nobody is perfect. What overcomes that? So that's what Chazal said. There's a sense of chayn. That covers it over. That makes life bearable. It makes it talent. I think part of the problem, I don't want to uh, digress too far, a part of the political problem that exists here in Israel and that certainly exists in the United States is that no one has chayim. There's no one there that I would want to go to dinner with as a person. And uh, because of that, so therefore it's a little raucous. And then the final bracha, Yisro Hashem Puno Veilecha Veyosem Lecha Shalom. That should raise you. His face will raise you. And it will give you shalom. Chazal say, last Mishnah, the Mukta, Momotza Kurish Borchu, Kaili Mansik Brocha, Ela Shalom. God could not find a vessel that could contain all the blessings of life except for Sholem. Sholem is the best. Um, I think I've mentioned it to you before. And when I first came to Israel, which is over 60 years ago, so it was a time in Israel that they didn't give you a bag at the grocery store. Today you gotta buy one, but so you had to come with your own sow, with your own basket. I'm coming from Miami Beach. I don't know anything. And uh, my supermarket in Miami Beach, even then, they bagged it for you and they carried it out to the car for you. You don't have to do anything. So I bought, uh, I went into the Mancola, I bought 10, 12 items. I paid them, and the 10, 12 items are on the counter. And he says, no. I said, ma, so they for a sal, where's your basket? I said, lo yadati, lo I don't know any bread. Take it away, forget it, you know, your next customer. So, you know, I have to put my yogurt in the pocket and this in the shirt, and then I'm walking like this. So I thought to myself, that's Kaili Mausik Brocha, right? I got a lot of brochas, but I have no way to take it home. I have no way to carry it. You always need a Kaili Mausik Brocha. And Chazal say the same thing. On the Posik, Oyo Emuna Sitecha, Hosin Yeshua, Schokmas Vadas, Yura Sashem, Hio Tsoro. So Chazal say, Emuna Sitecha, Emuna is Seder Zroim, Itecha is Seder Moed, Hosin is Seder Noshin, Yishecha is Seder Nizikin. Aharus, Kochim, you got the Gans Shas, you know, the entire Torah. You can't take it, but they haven't got a bag for it. Yerah Sashem, he owns Torah. If you have Yerah Sashem, then you got a bag, you can take it off. If there's no Yerah Sashem, you never take it home. 
does belong to him. So by Birchas Kohanim, Sholem, that's the bracha. Misha Sholem Shalom. The Rabboni Sholem is Sholem. Sholem is also Meloshim Shleimus. It's perfection. It's a whole, it's a harmony. It's not separate pieces. Somehow it all fits together. Chazal said that uh, this world is, uh, you know, it's like a, a puzzle. You know? So you can buy a 500 piece puzzle, 1,000 piece puzzle, you buy a 10,000 piece puzzle. I once saw somebody that had a puzzle that filled up his entire room. But if you buy a thousand piece puzzle and you put 950 pieces together, you have a terrible frustration because the puzzle is not complete. And if it's not complete, then so to speak, you feel incomplete. A life to a great extent is a puzzle, a gigantic puzzle. And we have to somehow put it together. So that's the idea of Sholem, of an inner harmony within oneself, harmony with the outside, the ability somehow to deal with so many disparate things and not be overwhelmed by it. So that's the bracha that the Kohanim give to us. That's what they bestow upon us. And therefore, when we say Amen, uh, we accept their blessing and we pray that it will be fulfilled in the way that Kaviyochel, the Rabboni Shalom, wants it to be fulfilled. And that's one of the uh, Great, great things about Trila B'Tzibur is that we're so good to have Birchas Kohani. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you. And stay cool. Thank you.